tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Neil held his breath as he made the last turn off the expressway toward Silent Springs. Memories started to flood his mind of growing up here. Silent Springs was a quiet town, filled with its average festivities and occasional crime, but it was a nice place to live. Neil left his hometown to take an opportunity to be an actor, but when jobs were hard to find and money was going up and down, Neil's face turned when his mother called asking if he wanted to move in to his grandfather's old house. When Neil asked why no one had bought the place since his grandfather died, his mom said it was so old that it was hard to find a buyer who wanted to invest in fixing it up, so they decided to ask if he wanted to buy it before they sold it to the realtor. And since Neil loved his grandfather so much, they figured he'd have a better chance of living there. Neil agreed as he had no other place to go, and felt closer to home. Pulling into the old driveway, Neil saw the house for the first time. Grass and weeds were overgrown, and the place was still standing. Maybe it needed a coat of paint, but it was solid as long as Grandpa lived there. He pictured his cousins and himself as they were kids, running up the porch, and Grandpa would open the door with a smile on his face. He could remember the chocolate milk and cookies at the kitchen table as Grandpa would have the radio playing jazz all day. During the holidays, Neil remembered when the family would get together and the kids would always play hide and seek. Grandpa's house was huge. There were so many rooms to hide in, but there was one room that Grandpa kept locked and Neil remembered being told never to enter it. Neil remembered asking his dad why they were not allowed to enter the room. Even his dad said that when he and Aunt Lisa were little, they were not allowed to enter it either. Neil pulled back the musky curtains and sunlight shone through the window. Although the place was old, it was livable. He put up some of his pictures and placed his belongings in their usual places. He'd have to have some updates to it but he wanted to keep it as authentic as possible to keep Grandpa's memory. Grandpa hadn't changed a thing in this house since Nana died, Neil thought to himself. It took several long days, but Neil eventually updated the old house with a security system and better internet and cable. He felt he was settling in. As Neil finished setting up his computer in one of the bedrooms and walked out of it, Neil looked at the door at the end of the hall, the one they were not allowed to enter. He still wondered why no one ever opened that door. What was it about that room Grandpa didn't want anyone to see? Neil slowly walked to the door, his arm stretching forward for the knob. He felt curious and a little nervous, the same way he felt when he was five years old. Neil remembered holding his toy dinosaur with one hand and reaching for the knob, heart pounding. He was curious about what was inside, even though he was told not to enter. He wanted to know what was inside. What are you doing, son? Startled, Neil turned around as Grandpa stood in the hallway, awkwardly holding his toy dinosaur. Neil stammered. What? What's in there? He asked. Grandpa smiled before coming toward Neil. Nothing in there for you to worry about, Grandpa said, taking Neil's hand. Just don't go into that room, okay? Neil ran a finger over his toy. Why? Because it's private, and you shouldn't go into private places, Grandpa replied. Neil didn't understand, but he figured he didn't want to upset Grandpa. He nodded. As Neil followed Grandpa to the stairs, 
he looked back over his shoulder one more time at the room before going down them. When they reached the bottom step, Grandpa bent down to look at Neil's face. Promise me you won't enter my secret room, said Grandpa. Nervously fiddling with his toy, Neil nodded, looking back at Grandpa. I promise. I promise, Neil said as he looked back at the door before going back downstairs. How's the house? Neil's mother asked on the phone. It's nice. Feels like home, Neil said. Do you need anything? Or think you'll be okay? I'm fine, but I have a question. Neil answered. What's that? He paused. Did Grandpa or Dad ever talk about a room that no one was allowed to enter? For a moment, his mother didn't answer. Neil heard the wind howling outside as he waited for her to speak. When she did, she sounded like she wasn't sure of herself. I remember your dad telling me about not going into a certain room when we stayed for the holidays, she said. But since it wasn't my house, I never thought anything of it. Maybe when your dad and I come out there, we'll go through the house and see what we can do about fixing the place up. Maybe see what's in that door after all. Sure, Neil said. Well, it's getting late. I better let you go, honey, his mom said. Okay, love you. Love you too. Neil hung up and leaned on the sofa. He could hear the wind howling, and his phone bleeped. Warning of an oncoming storm. Neil decided to shut off some lights, so he went through the house and turned them off. Neil went for the light when he reached the hall where the bedrooms were. He looked back at the door to Grandpa's secret room. The door was still locked with its secrets and questions. There was no key, and after researching how to pick a lock... Neil successfully twisted the screwdriver into the old keyhole. It loosened the knob, but Neil had to kick it open. After several hard kicks, the old door swung open. Neil sneezed at the dust and musky odor as he turned on the flashlight. The place was stacked with boxes. No furniture. No clothes, no toys. Just random boxes. Neil walked over and opened the boxes. At first, Neil found burlap sacks, and from how they were wrapped, Neil could tell whatever was inside was fragile. Neil put the flashlight on the side of the box to aim at the inside. He reached inside the box, holding his breath. His fingers wrapped around something long and stiff. Pulling it out, Neil saw that he was holding a rotting piece of cloth. He unrolled the fabric, and something fell to the floor, rattling. Neil grabbed the flashlight and reached for what he dropped, aiming the light on what he held up. Neil saw that he was grabbing what revealed to be hair. Like coarse, human hair. Neil shone the light and saw with horror that the hair was connected to a decomposed human head. In shock, Neil dropped it and scooted back as far as possible. He tried to get his panicked breathing under control. What the hell did he just find? Why was Grandpa keeping stuff like this? Finally, Neil pulled at the box and reached in, grabbing what he found was a plastic jewelry bag. Then he reached again and pulled out a jar with human teeth. Deeper inside were more things inside cloth and newspapers. Bones. A foot secured with glue. Horrified, Neil scrambled for the door, running out of the room and toward the bottom of the stairs. He couldn't believe what he had just found in his grandpa's house. Neil reached for his phone and called the police. Police arrived and found the body parts in the room that Neil signified. After six long hours of questions, Neil was so horrified after the police left that Neil fled the house and drove to his parents. 
The last thing Neil remembered was hugging his mom, unable to process what he had just seen. I know this is a shock to you, and I'm so sorry for what happened, Detective Seville said. He set a bottle of water in front of Neil. He stared at the table in front of him at the police station. He couldn't believe what he saw and knew that the right thing to do was talk to the cops. He had no choice but to report what he found. I know this is difficult considering that this is your grandfather's home and being family, but I'll need you to answer some questions. Neil nodded. Now, your house, you say, was an inheritance from your grandfather? Yes, Neil replied, trying not to cry. Do you remember anything about your grandfather that seemed unusual? Yeah, he had medicine for, um, what's it called? Dementia? Detective Seville nodded, writing some notes. After more questions, he finally closed his notepad. I know this is difficult for you, but we'll need you to stay with a friend or family member while we search the house. Neil nodded. The words were monotonous as the detective slid over papers and cards. And this is to reach me if you have any questions or issues. Take care of yourself. Neil looked at the detectives before he got up and walked out to his parents in the waiting room. The detectives reached the house and got out of their cars. All right, start searching, boys. Detective Seville said. They walked into the house and looked throughout the place. They reached the room that Neil had opened. When they walked inside, what they found made them cringe. Some of the body parts were so old they nearly fell apart when being picked up for evidence. The heads were decomposed, hard to figure out the identity. After several tireless hours with dental records and DNA evidence, along with the artifacts of jewelry, shoes, and other items dating back to the 1970s, the bodies were linked to several people who went missing between the ages of 18 and 35. Some male, some female. Some of the victims were so decomposed that it was hard to identify who they were. But... They were all connected to, at the time, the range of murders linked to the long ongoing case of the Silent Springs Killer from 1975. When there was suspicion of foul play when these missing persons were not found and presumed dead, they just didn't know until now who was responsible. The jobs included finding the next of kin to these victims and contacting the families and they found their man, but he was dead, so they couldn't hold the trial. How could Grandpa do this? Neil asked. His dad shook his head. I don't know, son, he sighed. I mean, Dad had some problems after Mom passed away. We never knew what went on while we weren't home. Neil looked at his dad. What do you mean? He'd tell us to go out and play, and was always done with his work in time for dinner. You never knew at all? We knew he was working on something. We just didn't know what. As much as Neil loved his grandfather, he wasn't so sure. After the shock of what Neil learned about his grandfather, known as the town murderer... He packed up and moved far away from where he grew up. The place he used to call home. Neil moved in with an old friend, but it was better than living alone in a murderer's house. Neil's family tried to get him to forgive Grandpa for what happened. Considering it was dementia, Grandpa believed he lived a second life where he could kill people. After talking to his parents and a psychiatrist, Neil still struggled to forgive. As for the memories, Neil wanted to remember Grandpa as the man he loved. 
but his secrets opened like a wound. The idea of being the descendant of the Silent Springs town killer made Neil realize that danger was even closer than he could have ever imagined. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.